Today we're at Upper Cervical Care Center and I'm here with Dr. Shallow. And Dr. Shallow is part of, well, I don't want to say an organization, but you have this amazing technique that you offer here and you actually teach this here. So how is it that Upper Cervical Care Center, um, you offers lessons in the FM Alexander technique. Did I say that right? Yes. Okay, good, good. I did some research on him today, very fascinating. So the main thing that we do here at the Upper Cervical Care Center is to correct the subluxation, the spinal subluxation, which is a bone out of place, putting pressure on nerve tissue and creating health problems. And, um, and so that's just the definition of the subluxation. But if you take that definition of the subluxation and you expand it out, it's not just uh, an interference on the bony structure level, it's actual interference in how you're doing things. In other words, uh, like if I was going to pick up a, a bow and arrow, I might pick up the bow and arrow and pull my elbow in like this, which is wrong. And so you need to have, you know, a broader stance. And so you're interfering with yourself. Does that make sense? Right, right. It's you're not your a, own worst enemy when it comes to what you're doing. Exactly. And so what happens in chiropractic is chiropractic says uh, you've got a bone out of place and it's creating problems with your function, with your nerve function. Mm -hmm. So let me adjust it. And FM Alexander says, uh, you're interfering with yourself. Let me teach you how to stop interfering with yourself. Ah, Make sense? Yeah. So does this have something to do with your neck? Yeah. And that's what's really interesting is because it all comes together with the relationship between the neck, head, and the back. And in the chiropractic work we do, we're correcting the bony structure relationship. And in the Alexander technique work that we do, uh, it's we're correcting the functional. In other words, we're teaching people how to stop interfering with this relationship, which most of the time is happening just because we have developed bad habits. Does that right. Make sense? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So how do you become a qualified teacher of this technique? Well, in my case, back in 1979, I had tendonitis in my left hand and the physical therapy uh, didn't help. And I had gotten to the point where I realized that there's obviously something that I'm doing with my violin playing that's wrong. Um, there's mm -hmm. too much tension. I need to go back to kindergarten, go back to zero, <laughs> and start over again, get rid of that tension. Mm -hmm. And at that point, then I was introduced to the Alexander Technique, and I took one lesson, and right away I thought, I got to do this. This is really good. And um, eventually I went through the teacher's training course. At that okay. time, it was a two-year training course. Uh, several years after I finished that training course, then the uh, organization in the United States got organized. And uh, we decided that it was going to be a three-year training course. And so I went back to wow. England and did another six months worth of postgraduate training. And it was, um, and so you have to actually go now through a three year training course to learn how to teach this work. Wow, quite extensive. So, mm -hmm. how does someone become a pupil of this specialized training? Well, first of all, you have to realize that, that, that there's something that you're doing that's interfering with how things are turning out. Mm -hmm. And then you just have to give us a call. I can't teach everybody. One of the things I've discovered over the decades that I've been teaching is that it has to do with your learning style. And if your learning style is too different from mine, then I can't communicate with you very effectively. Uh, and so I always screen people to see if, mm -hmm. if I can actually teach them. And if I can't, I don't want to waste everybody's money and time. Right, right. Yeah. Nobody wants that. So how long has this technique been around? Back in 1895, after FM Alexander spent about 10 years studying what he was doing with himself, he pretty much encapsulated what it was he, he needed to learn uh, and to teach people. So actually since before 1895, he had been figuring this out. Wow. So it was a really good year. It was the same year that Rankin <laughs> invented the x-rays. And in actually the same year Edison built his own x-ray machine. Um, also, it was the same year that chiropractic was discovered in Davenport by Palmer. So 1895 was a really spectacular year. It was quite a banner year. Yeah. I remember it well. Who would benefit the most from this technique? I've seen um, so many different conditions. It doesn't matter about the condition. What matters is can you use yourself effectively? Right. And and um, I've seen a cerebral palsy uh, pupil who was able to articulate better 
and stop drooling. You know, he got a lot of controls. So <laughs> the connection is mm -hmm. right here to for everything. Right. And um, so I don't know that you can... Limit. Yeah, because, yeah, I was just going to say, because it could be limitless. You never know right. if it's for you, if it's not for you until you ask about it. Or maybe like you, things aren't working so like they should the, be working. Right. Back in the beginning, when FM Alexander started teaching this work, he was mostly teaching actors and musicians. Uh, he was known as the breathing man. And um, uh, gradually he realized that there were some uh, influences on a person's overall health. Mm -hmm. And in 1902, then he moved to England to get a bigger audience and fell in with all kinds of famous people and royalty. John Dewey was one of his uh, pupils. Um, and John Dewey claimed that F.M. Alexander saved his life. The more over the decades, over the last hundred years, that we've been watching this work around the world, uh, there's basically no limit as to who can be helped. It's mm -hmm. just a matter of getting the work done and getting a person to the point where they actually know how to stop messing themselves up. Right. And they can come to you and get it all figured out, hopefully. Yeah. And uh, sometimes it's a very rapid process where I can teach a person how to take care of themselves on their own. Uh, and some of us need a little bit more long term. Right encouragement and teaching and reminding well we've no, been doing it probably wrong for a very long time so sometimes uh -huh. correction takes a little bit longer and it's a lot like playing a musical instrument and you, you never stop um, being coached if you're playing the violin every at least once a year especially if you're performing you're going to play for somebody who's going to critique you and mm -hmm. say hey wait a minute you're doing something that you don't right. think you want to do in alexander's work we're learning how to use ourselves how to um, move in activity and uh, and that's always very helpful to have somebody have the teacher actually guide you mm -hmm. uh, you can learn this on your own it just takes a really long time. Well, and it's helpful and, having somebody outside of the box looking in a little bit because right. there's things mm -hmm. you probably do you don't even notice you do. It's been yep. such a habit that that's maybe what needs to be corrected. Right. Mm -hmm. It's birthday time. Five-time Wimbledon champion Venus Williams will be 39 tomorrow. Also celebrating tomorrow, Fanilo favorite Barry Manilow will be 76. Tuesday, the legendary Paul McCartney and my mom's favorite guy ever turned 77. Another legend, American Idol's own Lionel Richie, is celebrating the big 7-0 on Thursday. Lastly, newly married Chris Pratt turns 40 on Friday. Happy birthday.